Hello, today we're going to talk about standing waves. When two waves of equal amplitude and wavelength pass through each other in opposite directions, it is possible to create an interference pattern and the wave will appear to be standing still or motionless. In the diagram, the incident wave is moving towards the right and the reflected wave moves to the left. So if we look at the black lines that are moving parallel to each other, you can see the incident and reflected waves. The resultant wave in red has an increased amplitude. Since the two identical waves travel in opposite directions, the net energy flow is zero. The energy is standing in the loops. Consider the animation of the longitudinal wave you observed previously. When watching the molecules or the little black dots on that video, you could view the compressions and refractions that made up one wavelength. That is very similar to the bottom of the diagram on your screen now. When sound enters a closed tube, it reflects off the bottom of the tube. In this case, the closed end is on the left of your screen. So sound is entering from the right and moving to the left and then reflecting back. And you can see the compressions and refractions in the bottom, but also note the wave along the top. See the nodes and antinodes. So again, the antinodes are the maximum disturbance or maximum vibration and nodes are areas of minimal or no displacement. Standing waves are produced by shaking a rope. If you look at the diagram, as the frequency of shaking your hand to create the waves increases, the wavelength decreases. Remember that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. Twice the frequency decreases the wavelength by half, Three times the frequency decreases the wavelength by a third. The lowest frequency of vibration, which produces a standing wave, is called the fundamental frequency and is shown in diagram A. So if we look at diagram A, there's only half a wavelength between the person's hand and the fixed hook on the far right. And so we're seeing both the incident and reflected ray. There's not actually two ropes there, it's just one. And then as you shake your hand faster and faster, you can create a full wavelength in B or a wavelength and a half in figure C. A string on a musical instrument is fixed at both ends. Therefore, any vibration of the string must have nodes at each end, limiting the possible vibrations within the rope or the string. For instance, the string with length L, if you look at figure A at the top, could have a standing wave with wavelength twice as long as the string, where the wavelength would actually equal 2L. This gives a node at either end and an antinode in the middle. And this is depicted in letter B. Suppose a rope or string is stretched between fixed ends as is shown in figure A. If the string is plucked somewhere along its length, only a certain set of frequencies will exist only frequencies that produce a wavelength with a whole number of half wavelengths that fit in the length of the string or rope are possible. Since half a wavelength exists between successive nodes, we see that in figure B, the wavelength is actually equal to two times the length of the rope. Remember the length of the rope, look back up to letter A. In figure C, the wavelength is equal to the length of the rope. We have both a crest and a trough in that diagram. In letter D, the wavelength is really two-thirds of the length of the rope because we have one and a half wavelengths. And in letter E, the wavelength is half of the length because we actually have two full wavelengths in that figure. Keep in mind that one wavelength keeps, consists of a crest and a trough. Standing waves on a string. So once again, to just reiterate what we just saw, you can have various numbers of wavelengths, but they all have to be equal to whole or half wavelengths. If you look at the bottom, you cannot have a wavelength that is produced when it's partially completed at the end because the string is fixed and therefore there is a node at either end of the string. We can also talk about fixed end or free end reflection. Fixed end, at the top diagram, the right end of the rope is tied to the post, the gray post. Since the rope cannot move, the reflected wave is inverted, and we see it come back 
as a trough. The bottom diagram, diagram the free end reflection, the right end of the rope is looped and is able to slide freely on the gray post. Since the end of the rope can move, the wave is not inverted up re upon reflection and comes back in the same direction. Recall that nodes are the point in the standing wave that undergoes complete deconstructive interference and is stationary. Remember nodes, node displacement. Whereas an anti-node is a point in a standing wave halfway between, the, between two nodes and it is where the largest amplitude occurs, maximum vibration, just the opposite of a node. The lowest frequency produced by an instrument is known as the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic of that instrument. So if you look at the top diagram where we see length L, half a wavelength, that's the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic. The second harmonic, the next diagram down, is produced by adding one more node and an anti-node in order to create a regular and repeating pattern. That node must be located midway between the ends of the string. This additional node gives the second harmonic a total of three nodes and two anti-nodes. The third harmonic, harmonic is produced similarly, and it's, we add two nodes between the ends of the string in order to create a regular and repeat, repeating pattern. The two additional nodes must be evenly spaced between the ends of the string. These additional nodes give the third harmonic a total of four nodes and three anti-nodes. Look at the equation at the bottom of your sc screen. Frequency equals NV divided by 2L. Frequency is equal to N, the number of anti-nodes, multiplied by V, the wave speed, divided by 2 times L, or the length of the string. Beats or beat frequency. If we're trying to calculate or measure the frequency of the beat, we actually have to be aware of the frequencies of the two sounds we're listening to. So beat frequency is equal to the frequency of the first sound produced or the first wave minus the second wave or sound produced. Musicians listen for beats to discern if instruments are out of tune. And if beats are heard, then they realize the instrument is not tuned properly. After tuning, the beats disappear. So in the example on your screen, the loudness rise and falls 10 times per second. Keep in mind, 10 times per second, that's frequency. So frequency 1 minus frequency 2 is the beat frequency. And if we look at the wave at the top of the diagram, wave 1 has a frequency of 40 hertz. Wave 2 has a frequency of 50 hertz, not 30 as it depicted on the diagram. So the combined wave beat frequency is 10 hertz. So 40 minus 50, or 40 minus 30, would be equal to 10. So whether wave 2 was 50 hertz or 30 hertz, we would still have a beat frequency of 10 hertz. That's all about standing waves and beats. Stay tuned. More physics is coming your way.